fellow riders. As you know, racing is a big part of mountain biking for me. And as a racer, I'm always trying to get faster. So recently, I started training with my buddy, Derek Teal. Derek has a huge amount of experience in mountain biking as well as training and he's developed his own mountain bike specific training program. So we're outside his gym right now. We're about to go inside and go through one of the workouts. I've been training under Derek's program for a couple months now and I've already noticed huge improvements in my riding. So if you're interested in becoming a better rider, I hope you check it out. Downhill gym. Zach's been training with me for a couple months now, so he's gonna come in. We're gonna do one of his workouts and kind of explain why we're doing it, what we're doing, and hopefully get some out of it. Work your glutes first, just because I know you had some hip issues this winter. So yeah. So really, when it comes to starting a session, foam rolling isn't mandatory for everybody, but we want to do it to basically release tight areas help realign muscles, get some blood flow going. And honestly, if you're tired, it's just an easy way to start because it feels good and you just work on a light sweat. So we are starting with foam rolling today and really that's the release part of the workout. After this, we're gonna go to a warm up and really just get the blood flowing. It's kind of generic, we're gonna feel the row machine. Uh, you just wanna make sure you get the heart rate up enough to have a little sweat. And then when you follow it up with a stretch, you're actually really stretching, you're really mobilizing. Uh, after the stretch, we're gonna to wanna to activate, which honestly is, for mountain bikers, the most important part, because if you're not activating the correct muscles, you can be using compensations you've built up over the course of riding. Activate the right muscles, and you'll make sure that you protect yourself from injury, and actually put yourself in the posture and accomplish the real goal you want. After the activation, that's when we actually strength train, so this is when you're gonna do your heavier movement, uh, once you're done with your strength training, follow it up with a stretch. That way you know all the muscles you just built, all the compensations you hopefully just fought are going to be corrected for longer and then you can come into your next session and feel a little bit more fresh. The foam roller can be complicated and my job is to show you where you exactly need it. Cyclists really want to get their back. They want to make sure they get their hips uh, just like we started with and especially the front of your shoulder. Um, these are all areas that are really tense while you're riding, especially while you're descending. Um, because if you're not braced there and you're not using it, then you're probably going to be flimsy, and, which is what we don't want. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's the biggest thing I've noticed is just feeling way more comfortable and like looser, but like way more in control yeah. on the bike while descending. Yeah, so, that's it, been awesome. That's because you're doing this, which you are getting looser, but when you do the strength work on top of it, you're now strengthening a more mobile joint. Yeah. So. Walkout vinyasa, a great example of a total body stretch, which when you're riding is total body. So when you work all these at once, it's actually gonna be super effective uh, before your session. And this is even something in the morning you could do before you go out to a ride period. So he's warmed up, we're in the stretch phase and he's gonna do three reps of this before you move on. A good rule of thumb on these stretches before your workout is three to five second holds. And that's because you wanna stay in the active stretch, keep your body moving, you stay warm, but you're still lengthening the muscle. So when Zach talks about feeling more loose and relaxed on the bike, it's because the stretch is like this. He's basically rotating through his hip, he's twisting his back, he's opening up his chest, these are all things that you do on the bike while you're going around corners, you have switchbacks, you have drops. Dude, everyone this, wants like a hack. Yeah, yeah, everyone, that's why, yeah. that's why you see like, stuff like Skills with Phil is so popular. I mean, yeah. his videos are great, but like, people just want to know how they can get better yeah. on the bike. And, well, it's true. It's, it's never, it's never going to be easy, but like nah. doing some workouts twice a week is a little bit easier for people than getting out onto their bikes sometimes and going riding cool stuff. Dude. So it's so true because you can. It's way less of a time commitment to come into the gym for an hour when you know you're still making progress on the bike. Because it sucks sometimes you feel like I'm not riding, so I'm not getting better. But 
you know, with this kind of thing, you actually can get better. Yeah, totally. Like, that's what I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so strength round one is starting with an activation move, TRX reverse fly. We're doing this to basically activate and build these muscles in his back, behind his shoulder. This is all gonna stabilize his shoulder right here. So first activation move of the round. Make sure you squeeze your shoulder blades together. Obviously, we want strong, stable shoulders on the bike for not only when you're riding, but when you crash. The more you can take a hit, the less you'll be injured. And that's all gonna happen when you do movements like this. You're stabilizing, you're building strength. <laughs> so Zach's doing his bunny hop now. Um, he's got the band around his ankles, and we went from stabilizing the shoulders to now the hips. So this band is gonna work your glute medius, basically protect your knees, get the hips strong. Again, when your knees are stable, you drive more power on the pedal. And hopefully, when your hips are stronger, you crash, you don't tweak them as much. So, we're gonna do monster walk. You're gonna keep your feet not quite that wide, bring them in a little bit, okay? And you're just gonna keep them wide as you walk forward and then in reverse. So again, we have the band around the ankles, we're using the hips to stabilize the knee. Let's go back in reverse. Right now, we're keeping his hands up just to keep his core engaged, and that way he's not turning his shoulders every step. Make sure you're not dragging your feet and keep the toes straight. We're gonna do a goblet squat. We activated his shoulders, we activated his hips. We're gonna tie it together with the strength movement. So goblet position here. Zach, give me 12 reps. Let's drop the butt between the heels. Good. So this is a total body movement, but it's primarily your legs. And I wanna clear up the biggest misconception about cycling training. It's that you need to train your legs a lot in the gym, and you honestly don't. You need to train them, but it's more important to activate them and build a little bit of strength instead of these high volume workouts, which it's like lunges and squats and deadlifts all in the same day. It's too much. If you're riding a lot, it's gonna burn you out. So you wanna just like put the little sprinkle on top. This is the, what's going on top of all your riding. Your volume of riding with this is gonna make you the best rider. Not a ton of training in here and a ton of training out there. It's just too much. Okay, circuit number two, we're going to a little bit more of an upper body focus, a little bit more power. Zach is doing single arm rows. What's awesome about this movement is power transfer. He's pushing through his right arm while he pulls with his left arm. This is something you do on your bike constantly, and you'll really notice something like this, especially when you get your core firing because the energy is just going right across. This is another great example of power transfer, stability, control, all things you do constantly on the bike. But you can see he's moving at his shoulder, he's moving at his hips. The whole time he's controlling it all the way through his core, down to his feet that are planted down here. So raise the hips up a little higher, push them more forward at the top. Give me two more reps. Just finished up the workout, strength training's over. We did everything in the perfect order and now we gotta end it perfectly with a stretch. So this kneeling hip wall stretch is amazing for cyclists because you're always in this crunched position and now we're opening it up, not only in your quad, but also in your hip. So Derek's gonna offer you guys a discounted price off his online training program. So you can just use discount code TRAILPEAK at his website at dialedhealth.com and he'll dial you in with a sweet cycling training program. That's right, it's gonna be eight to 16 weeks. So it's gonna cover the entire off season if you want. Uh, all the way up until March 1st if you start when it drops November 1st. 